Hi, and welcome again to our time of worship. For those of you who were with me last week, I have a confession to make. I hope you enjoyed the last hymn, and I put it especially after the <coughs> blessing because there was nothing I could say after that. When I I first heard it last week, I'll be honest with you. Um, I played it several times, and when I was listening to it carefully, reading the words, and it got to the verse, he showed me my his hands and his ribbon side, and whispered, I did this for thee. I'm sorry, I just, well done, I just. I felt I knew what John Wesley meant when he said, I felt my heart strangely warmed. I just, tears of joy just flooded. And that's why I put it where I did, because I didn't think I could say anything after it. And I couldn't have done. So, let's look to our time of worship this week. We're going to start off with a well-known hymn of angel voices ever singing round thy throne of light. The theme of our service this week is prayer. 
a very important part of a Christian's life, I'm no doubt you'll totally agree. There is a reason that I am leaving the Lord's Prayer out of our first set of prayers. And there's a wonderful prayer that was written by John Donne, born 1572. It's a prayer, it's entitled a hymn to God the Father, it's a prayer for forgiveness. And we all need forgiveness. But we need to remember that we don't need to keep repeating the same prayer if we have asked God's forgiveness because we've done A and B this week. Next week we don't need to remind him about A and B because he's already dealt with that. And I don't want us to get into the habit of... It's very hard not to repeat the same prayers when you're leading the service, whether you're reading them from the Methodist Worship Book, whether you're reading them off a VDU, whether you're reading them off a piece of paper, or whether, as I try always to pray what's on my heart at the time, Sometimes we need something written. My memory is what it is, and I'm not sure whether I've used this before, as this is now. The 18th um, video I've done, and some of you are still watching. Wow. Thank you. I need your help. I'm running out of ideas for hymns. 18 weeks, four tunes a week, 72 different hymns. I'm trying not to repeat them if I can. I'm going to get to a stage where I'm going to have to repeat them or mix them about a bit. Um, but please, my phone number is on the back of the worship plan. My email address is my name, which is Phil Bridgewater, two L's in Phil and Ian Bridgewater at hotmail.uk. Or you can leave a message on YouTube underneath the video. Give me your favourite hymns. Let me know what I can pick from and if I can find them, I'll use them. So I need your help. Let's do this together. But now let's come to a time of prayer. We'll start with our prayer of asking God to forgive our errors of this week. And I'm going to use this hymn to God the Father by John Donne for that. Because it, it's not one that speaks to me and it, it says that a lot that I think. Because we ask God to forgive our sins and then we go and do them all over again, don't we? Well, I do. So, reading John Donne's Hymn to the Father. Will thou forgive that sin where I begun, which was my sin, though it were done before? Will thou forgive that sin through which I run, and do run still, though still I do deplore? When thou hast done, thou hast not done, for I have more. Will thou forgive that sin which I have won, others to sin and made my sin their door? Will thou forgive that sin which I did shun a year or two, but wallowed in a score? When thou hast done, thou not hast not done, for I have more. I have a sin of fear that when I have spun my last thread, I shall perish on the shore. Swear by thyself that at my death thy son shall shine as he shines now and heretofore. And having done that, thou hast done, I fear, no more. I ask our Father to forgive us our sins which we bring to him with a true and contrite heart. 
in the name of Jesus Christ, our Saviour. And it is our Saviour who said, Look, I am making all things new. Our sins are forgiven. Praise the Lord. And we do praise you, Father, as we sing our next hymn, Oh, for a heart to praise my God. Come now to time of scripture. I'm reading from the usual NIV Matthew's account of the gospel. And this is passages about Jesus explaining to his disciples how to behave. Explain to us how to behave. I'm reading chapter 6, verses 5 to 15. And I want us to pay special attention to this, and especially to the last two verses, 14 and 15, which we don't hear very often. Jesus is speaking. And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by men. I tell you the truth, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father, who sees what is done in secret and will reward you. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. This then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, 
hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For if you forgive men when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will not forgive your sins. If you do not forgive others when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will not forgive your sins. Come to time of prayer. We're going to praise our, praise our thanks and our intercession and petition together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we do bring you our praise and our thanks, our praise for you, who you are, and our thanks for what you do for us in our daily lives. Things that we take for granted. Things that we don't praise you for. We want to praise you because you are the only true God. You are the creator of all that is. You are worthy of our praise. We bring you our praise today in our speaking, in our reading, in our singing of hymns. We want to bring you praise in our lives. The people may see you through us and this is the greatest praise that we can give you and we want to thank you father for the wonderful words that we can read of your doings in the old testament and our lord's doings in the new we want to thank you that we have the guidance of your holy book and father as we read these things and read how we should behave, we look to the world today and see how far the world has fallen from the way you designed it to be. So we pray for all the countries, Father, in the world where there is trouble, where there is fighting, national or international. We pray for the whole world during this pandemic as we fear a second wave. We pray that the governments of all the world make the right decisions and that the peoples of all the world follow the instructions that they are given for it is for the sake of others that they need to keep themselves safe and I pray that we as Christians can be at the vanguard of doing the right thing during these days Father, we pray for our local communities. We pray for our circuits. We pray for our churches, which prayerfully will soon be opening. But we do pray for those of our membership who will feel apprehensive about returning to corporate worship. Quite understandably. And Father, we pray for your leadership in all that we do. We ask this in and through the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord and Saviour, our Redeemer and Friend. Amen. We sing again now, wonderful song, My Jesus, My Saviour.
One of our hymns says, Prayer is a soul's sincere desire, unuttered or unexpressed. John Newton, as you know, wrote Amazing Grace. He also wrote these words. Come, my soul, thy soup prepare. Jesus loves to answer prayer. He himself has bid thee pray, therefore will not say thee nay. Thou art coming to a king, large petitions with thee bring. For his grace and power is such, none can ever ask too much. With my burden I begin, Lord, remove this load of sin. Let thy blood for sinners spilt set my conscience free from guilt. Lord, I come to thee for rest, take possession of my breast. There my blood wrought right maintain, and without a rival reign. While I am a pilgrim here, let thy love my spirit cheer. As my guide, my God, my friend, lead me to my journey's end. Prayer is so very important. But prayer is a two-way thing. Prayer is us talking to God. And it's also God talking back to us. God speaking to us. Now we may think God doesn't speak to me. Yes, he does. One mouth two ears, listen twice as much as we speak. Sounds good coming from a preacher doing a sermon, doesn't it? But prayer is our solstice. We need to communicate. Communication in everything, in our daily lives, in our church lives, in our country's lives, in the world life, communication is a great tool. And the greatest tool of communication is our communication with God. Yes, as Jesus says, our Father knows what we need before we open our mouth. But we need to acknowledge that. We need to acknowledge that we know what we want to say. That we want to give him praise. We want to tell him that. We want to tell him how much we love him. We want to tell him how much we thank him. We want to apologise and say sorry for the things we get wrong. And we want God to forgive us our sins. Because this is only by being sinless that we get into heaven. Because God cannot be in the presence of sin. Are your garments washed? Are they white as snow? Are they cleansed in the blood of the Lamb? Now we have it in our power to stop God forgiving our sins. Did you know that? We can choose to say to God, Get it. Don't forgive my sins. We read from Matthew's Gospel. Verse 12 of chapter 6. Forgive our debts as we have also forgiven our debtors. Notice the context have forgiven. John Wesley said of that passage, are we asking for glorious blessings or calling down curses upon our own head? Yes, we can stop God forgiving us. Because if we read the last two verses, 14 and 15, that we don't read out usually, chapter. For if you forgive men their sin when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive your sins. 
he will do likewise. What we do to others, somebody has sinned against us in word or deed, and we speak to God in prayer and say, I have forgiven that person. We may need at times to say, I need your help to forgive him because I want to forgive him or her. But I have forgiven. That then opens the floodgates for God's grace and bounty and forgiveness. That opens the floodgates of Jesus' blood to cleanse us. But if we refuse to forgive, that gate stays closed. We are stopping God forgiving us. My mother used to have an expression, I'll forgive you this time, but I won't forget because you've done it before and you'll do it again. That is not forgiveness. Forgiveness is forgetting. Yes, it's hard. We're human. We've got a mind. We've got a brain. We don't forget things. Unless it's things like, what did I for breakfast yesterday? Yes, when we get older, we do start forgetting things. But we need always to be in the habit of forgetting sin against us. Anybody who has done us wrong, we need to turn around and say, there's the line in the sand, it's forgiven, it's forgotten, it never happened, we start again. I had a trouble with this a lot of years ago. Somebody had caused me a lot of problems, a lot of stress, a lot of worry. And I said to my superintendent at the time, I said to him, I can never forgive her. She actually caused me to move house. I can never forgive her. And he said to me, you must, and you can. Because you need to think of it like this. These last two verses. If we forgive, we allow God to forgive us. If we don't forgive, he can't. Now we ask him to forgive our sins and we forgive our, he forgives our sins by us confessing them to him. He knows we've done them, as with John Donne's prayer. He knows we've done them. But we need to acknowledge them. He knows we lost our temper with somebody. He knows we couldn't be bothered to help somebody because we just had to go and watch something on television. But he needs us to acknowledge those so he could, can forgive them. So what my superintendent said to me, he said, Phil, he said, look, you forgive this person and move on. Forgive. Line in the sand, step over it. Forget it. Put it behind you. But that person will not be forgiven by God until she confesses her sin. And that gave me an awful lot of comfort and understanding about the way forgiveness works. We don't have to go up to that person, throw our arms around them and say, I forgive you. We don't have to invite them to lunch. We don't have to be buddy, buddy with them. We just need to tell God that we've forgiven them and leave the rest to him. So this passage that we don't often read from Matthew's account of the Gospel is very, very 
important. We must learn a habit of forgiveness. No matter what, no matter who, we forgive. It's not being cowardly, it's not being, not giving in, it's not a case of them winning and us losing. It's a case of being the bigger person. It's a case of giving it all to God. Hey, look, you know this has happened. I am going to forgive that person up to you. You will deal with them as you see fit. Nothing to do with me. But I have forgiven them. And by you forgiving anyone and everyone that has caused you problems whether it's small problems or whether it's really big problems are you telling the father not necessarily telling them telling the father that you have forgiven them opens the floodgates to Emmanuel's veins that we can be washed in the blood of the Lamb our garments are spotless white as snow and we can be accepted by God into heaven. Our prayer is the soul sincere desire unuttered or unexpressed. Whether spoken, whether silent, whether a sign, Jesus, God, knows what we're trying to say. Sometimes we find it hard to put into words. He knows what's on the heart. So, my dear friends, read this passage. And it says when we pray, don't go on babbling like the hypocrites because they think they'll be heard because there are many words. In one of Adrian Plass's humorous Christian verses. He says that I know that prayer strength isn't measured by length, so I pray for two minutes a day. You'd be surprised what you were saying two minutes to God. Because we can pray to God whenever, wherever we are. And he answers prayers. He answers our little prayers. He answers things that we don't even think about. It, it, it sounds incredulous, I know, but years and years ago I had I, I bought a car and second hand and on the way home it stopped. And I really couldn't find out what was wrong with it. It was Ford Capri Classic. And I sat in there and I tried to start it and it wouldn't fire. I was in a very awkward place, I was on a hill just before a bend. And I can remember saying Oh, God, make this thing start. I tried it again and it started. Now, there was no reason it started. There was no reason it got me home. Because, in actual fact, those who know anything about cars, gentlemen my age, the Rotorama shot. Needs a new Rotorama distributor. The little spring with a carbon brush was damaged. But God answers prayers. Not just the great big miraculous things, but the little things. So talk to him often. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things will be added unto you. So pray to God. But remember that when you pray for forgiveness of the things that you've done wrong, which we have to pray for, you don't need to keep praying for the same thing. God's memory is better than ours. You ask him once, you take it to the foot of the cross, you come away, you forget it, you leave it to him. He will deal with it and he will forget it. The psalmist said, O oh Lord, if you counted our transgressions, who would stand? Nobody. But the only way that we can allow God to forgive us is by first giving 
that forgiveness to others. Before we look at the speck of dust in our neighbour's eye, look at the plank in our eye. Before you ask God to forgive you, allow him the chance to forgive you by not holding a grudge against anybody, by forgiving everyone who has ever done anything to you. Then you open the gates for God to forgive you. You open, as John Donne says, at the end of his prayer. And swear by thyself that at my death thy son shall shine as he shines now and heretofore, and having done that, thou hast done. I have no more. God bless you. Stay safe. I will see you next week. We think of our Saviour. He has said he's coming back. As you know, I always use the same doxology which I'll be using after the hymn this week. So let's sing. Lo, he comes with clouds descending.
every eye shall see him. What a wonderful time that will be. And my friends, I pray that you all stay well, stay safe. I ask God to bless you all, make his face shine upon you. And may the love of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and remain with you until he either comes or calls, and then forevermore. I bless you all. I'll see you next week. God bless you.